Hello there. Thank you for joining me again as we study the wisdoms of God by looking into His Word. I'm going to tell you a story, first of all, a true story that happened to me many, many years ago. I was still living in Ireland at the time, but came to America for a trip. I can't remember at all all the different places I visited or spoke in different churches, but I know that I ended up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And while I was there, I went into the bookstore on Oral Roberts University campus and with nothing particular in mind. And it was a rather large bookstore. I enjoyed just looking around. And then suddenly I came across some posters and one particular one really caught my eye. It was of Jesus, head and shoulders. He didn't look a bit sissish or feminine. He looked strong, and I don't know, but I just liked it. It was only a couple of dollars. I can't remember exactly, but it was almost nothing to buy. I bought it, rolled it up, put it in my case, brought it home. What happened after that was rather remarkable. At that time, we had a good friend. His name was David and he had a picture shop in the city center of Belfast. And uh, one day we took it down and said, David, would you put a frame around it? We really like this picture. He said, sure, Leslie. And that was that. i tell you the truth. After that, I forgot all about it. And then maybe two or three weeks later, I remembered. I called David up and I said, David, uh, did you get time to put that frame around it? He said, Leslie, did you not hear? I said, hear what, David? Oh, he said, my store has suffered a, from a bomb explosion. He said, it was awful. Oh, I said, I didn't know. You know, in a city where there were so many bomb explosions, I guess you can miss one. So I said, I didn't hear. Are you all right, your wife all right, your staff? Yeah, he said, we all got out. And the building's still here, but he said, the inside is absolutely devastated. I said, I'm so sorry. Maybe a week or so after that, Maureen, my wife, was downtown with me, city center of Belfast, so we called by to see David. When we walked in the front door, it was a place of distress. It was obvious. And of course, there was water damage from the fire engines and and uh, you can imagine the debris uh, from from a, a bomb explosion and david when we walked in the front door he was at the back he saw us coming and he rushed up a ladder to kind of a makeshift platform up there and he grabbed hold of something and he came rushing toward me and maureen my wife and he was holding it like this and this is what he said. I remember it exactly as if it was today it happened. Look, Leslie, he said, only Jesus survived the explosion. I said, hold it, David, I said. I want you to say that again. He didn't think there was much significance in that, but it was true out of thousands of paintings and photographs and things. They were all ruined, except this one of Jesus. And uh, he said, look, Leslie, only Jesus survived the explosion. And uh, I said, that is marvelous. And we got it uh, uh, framed. And he said, the only thing is there's a little nick here on the neck. And he said, I can fix that up. I said, don't. I said, leave it like it is. It'll always remind us that Jesus survived the explosion. I want to ask you, have you had an explosion in your life? Of course, obviously, I don't mean from a regular bomb, but in troubles and battles, have you had an explosion? Everything has gone wrong in a tailspin. It could be financial. It could be physical. It could be in a relationship. It could be a whole lot of things. It could be your own fault. It could be somebody else's fault, whatever. Have you had an explosion? You know, the word trouble is used in the Bible repeatedly. 
In fact, I'm going to give you five verses, all, all out of the book of Psalms, which has the word trouble. And what is the correct Hebrew for that? Well, trouble means an adversity, an affliction, something bad, a calamity, something that does you harm, something that's heavy, something that's hurting. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Have you had an explosion? Please listen to these verses. I believe they will do you good. The first one is Psalm 25, verse 17. The troubles, the explosion, what has gone wrong in my life? The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. The truth is this, I hate to say it, David had sinned, and now he's going to pay the price. He's in trouble. Uh, many things were happening. Remember his son turned against him, Absalom. There was murder and adultery in his family in various areas. And David himself, as I said, had fallen short, and he was in terrible, deep trouble. But he had the sense to say, I've had an explosion in my circumstances. I'm troubled. But please, God, in spite of the fact that it was my fault, please. And the next statement is, Oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. God is willing to bring us out of our explosion of troubles and difficulties, even if they were our fault. God is willing to bring us out if we call upon him and ask for his help sincerely to be delivered from the distresses. Here's Psalm 27, verse 5. You've got to get this. For in the time of trouble, hurt, affliction, heaviness, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. I can still see myself as a little boy, probably four or five, in my pajamas, and I was running to what? To get into an air raid shelter. The German bombers were coming over and Belfast was badly hit. It doesn't matter how I was dressed, as long as I could get into the shelter to be delivered from my troubles. You've heard of that famous hymn, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Mr. Top Lady over in England wrote that after an experience where he was caught up in a storm and took shelter under an overjutting rock. What was wrong with David at this time? He was a fugitive, a runaway from Saul. Saul tried to kill him at least 24 times. Somebody had turned against him out of sheer jealousy. Has that happened to you? Somebody got mad with you, they're jealous of you, you're envious of you. It can happen. And I'm going to read that again. For in the time of trouble, it was troubling. There's an old saying, you know, never trouble trouble till trouble troubles you. For if you trouble trouble, trouble will surely trouble you. You usually don't have to go looking for it. For in the time of trouble, hurt, calamity, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me up upon a rock. It used to be in medieval days over there in Britain, uh, churches were allowed to be sanctuaries. And if somebody was in trouble, they could run and they get into the church, then they were safe. Are you in the rock and under the shadow of the rock? He's the only one that can protect you from your troubles. Why did he write Rock of Ages, Clef for me, Mr. Top Lady? Because he had been caught up in a storm and it was the rock that saved him. Jesus is the rock. And as long as you're in that rock, he's going to bring you through this storm and these troubles. I'm going to give you number three. 
Those first two, by the way, were the Psalms of David. This one is from Hezekiah. Boy, do I ever love this. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Spoken by Hezekiah. You remember the problem he had with Sennacherib and the Assyrian army and all that? Circumstances closing in on him. It was not his fault, but he was in trouble. Are you in trouble financially, physically, whatever way? Has an explosion happened in your fears and circumstances? Let me delight your soul by reading you that again. Psalm 46, verse 1. God, God, God is our refuge and strength. We run to Him for shelter. A very present help in trouble. It makes me think of one of the names of God, Jehovah Shammah. And it means the Lord is there. Where? There. Where's there? Wherever you are. Are you here? God's here. Are you over there? God's over there. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And he's not late. It may appear that way. He's a very present help in trouble. Call upon him. Wow. I'm going to give you one more also written by Hezekiah. Psalm 119, verse 143. These people knew what it was to live real life. Trouble and anguish have taken hold upon me. Yet, he says, thy commandments are my delight. Isn't that terrific? Make sure that when the trouble strikes, when the trouble strikes, that you continue in the word. You continue, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, because he gives two opposite things here. Number one, he's in trouble and anguish. They have taken hold upon me, yet your word is my delight. Here's the last one. Psalm 77, verse 4. The holdest mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. That was written by Asaph. Make sure that in your trouble you continue to speak God's word and praises to God. It's like Paul, he said he was in trouble. Thalipsis, he was pressed beyond measure, but the Lord helped him in a marvelous way. God loves you and so do I. And I want to remind you of a few things. Don't forget, if you want to help us financially, lesliehale.com. Don't forget, you can watch our Sunday morning service live on YouTube, 10 o'clock. You can subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, too, that on the first Sunday of September, we will be starting our new series on the seven feasts of Israel. In the meantime, I want you to know I love you. That really happened regarding that uh, picture. Jesus survives every explosion. And if you're in Jesus, then you're going to survive every explosion. You're going to come through this. No, no, don't think of suicide or running away from the situation. Stand firm, even if you were at fault in some of it. Because he's a merciful God, call upon him. He will enjoy hearing from you and will plan your deliverance, which is for sure. Let me say one more time, you're in Jesus, and Jesus survives every explosion, and so do you. God richly bless. See you next time.